Hello. I've used the tennis ball for several years since I retired and moved home to Scotland. These are my ideas and exercises on how an Epius can train with the ball. I hope they might be of some small use to you. I do it because living on the Isle of Skye and now in Inverness means my fencing opportunities are much more limited than London or Edinburgh. But now we're all locked down. The higher the ball can be mounted, the better, because the longer its swing, the more you can work your legs keeping distance. I am lucky to have a high ceiling, so mine is hung 2.8 metres above the ground on a 1.6 metre string. One weakness of the ball as a training aid is that its swing is predictable. When it comes towards you, it tends to come in a straight line at a steadily rising height. In some ways, that's not unlike an opponent's hand, but no opponent is as consistent as the swing of a pendulum. To make mine a little more unpredictable, I fitted a rubber band between the string and the ball. It's only a small bit of variety, but it helps. There is no point in just standing in front of the ball poking at it. Hit it square on and leave your point in place and the ball will swing back and onto the point again. Few fences are so obliging and it doesn't train anything useful. So, training on the tennis ball needs to be like taking a lesson, except that you have to be your own coach. You set the exercises and you have to recognise and correct your mistakes. I'll show you some exercises in a moment, but first, what are the common mistakes? Not keeping distance. If the ball swings past your point and you don't move back, you've been hit. Pulling the arm back to get the point on, you should be moving your feet to keep distance. Not making the hit with a forward movement of the hand and the arm. Not using the fingers to fix the point. Not looking where you're trying to hit. Slapping the side of the ball and thinking you've hit it. If it's flat on the ball, it'll be flat on an opponent. I set a timer for 15 minutes, then take two or three minutes to get hand and legs moving before working through three or four exercises. Just keep down on guard and keep moving until the timer sounds. The exercises are elements built up. Firstly, moving with the ball keeping the point in distance. Then you can add a simple hit to it, pick the moment. Move with the ball, pick the moment. A simple hit can be done on a static start with steps back. Now make a hit, make a remise and a counter-attack. Hit, remise, counter. Now add in movement. Hit, remise, counter. For the parry riposte, there's no opponent's blade, but you can make your own blade action in counter sixth. Moving to take your distance from the swing of the ball. and in cart. You can put as many together as you can. And mix counter sixth and cart. You can do successive parries, cart sixth in slow motion here. Cart sixth. Like the parry, you make the action for an engagement and a hit, then add a riposte, engage, hit, riposte, move with the ball, pick the tempo lunge, engage, hit, riposte, lunge. Last exercise, the angulation inside outside, it's less about the hit and more about the speed of hand from one side to the other. As you build it up, you can add in other elements, like the parry riposte. And then, more movement 
always working the speed of the hand. Obviously, you can build games around the exercises. How many can you get right in a row? How many hits without missing? Fight the ball to five. Get a sequence right and score a hit. Get it wrong and the ball scores. Do pyramids. One correct repetition of a sequence, then three, then five, then three, and finally one to finish the set. These make you think about things outside the technique of the exercise, counting the reps, but also the consequences of failing, just two more to win and so on. They're also the sorts of thoughts you need to be able to put on one side in a fight because they just don't help. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.